everyone, this is Maria, and today is a sewing day for me. I'm going to be making two aprons for our dog's groomer. And so Jack and Sally's groomer comes on Wednesday, which is just a couple of days away. And so lately, I say for the last three months, and this will be the fourth month, we've been exchanging trading aprons for services. And so that's been really great for both of us. And so let me show you the fabric I'm going to be using. I went ahead and got this fabric at Joanne's Fabric and Crafts. Isn't it cute? It's a Valentine print fabric and it's got little dogs on it. She loves everything with dogs, cats, frogs, turtles, and just about everything. And I thought she could wear this one for the entire month of February. This fabric here, I love this and I know she's just going to love it too and she's going to laugh. Um, look at this print. These are yoga frogs and it has sayings on here like let go, relax, peace, in the moment, chill out and lighten up and find balance and harmony. And so let's get started, you guys. So the first thing I did with my fabric when I got home was I went ahead and ran it through the washer machine. And so then I'm going to, I put it through the dryer, and then what I'm doing now is I'm just going to press it. So I'm just going to iron it because I want it to be nice and crisp, the fabric, when I work on it. And so I'll be doing a lot of ironing throughout the process of making these aprons. Okay, so now I want to show you the pattern I'm going to be using. I'm not going to be using an actual paper pattern. This is an apron that I purchased at Alvaro Street in Los Angeles, oh my gosh, like 10 years ago. You can see it's all faded. I love this apron though. I really love it. And you can see this one, I used this um, kind of belting that I got at Joann's and I used this on the aprons that I made and did giveaways around Halloween time and I really like this. But with my groomer, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a belting and the neck strap from fabric. And so I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a little bit. And so basically what I did with this and just like I did with the other aprons for a pattern and you can do this with your favorite apron is just fold it in half and then I'm just going to pin it together and this is going to serve as my pattern. And so I really like this. You can adjust it if you need it a little bit wider or a little bit smaller for a child. And so, yeah, it's super simple. It's an easy pattern. It doesn't have any pockets, which I like. I don't need any pockets, uh, but Miss Kelly loves pockets. And so, you know, a pocket to put her phone in while she's grooming the dogs. Or something like that and so I've been adding pockets to her aprons so the next thing I did was I drew a pattern because our groomer is a plus size and so that's why she asked me to make aprons for her because she says it's very difficult to find really cute aprons you know with cute patterns on them cute prints and so I can certainly understand that and so the first thing I did, and by the way, by no means am I a seamstress at all, you guys. I know basic sewing that I learned in junior high, and that's what I've used all these years. Just basic, just basic straight stitch. And so anyways, yeah, so I just cut out, if you could see this, just the, uh, the top part, the bodice part of the apron. And so it was really simple because she was here, and I had her as my model, and I just tape some of these just paper, like computer paper together. So you can see where I have tape here and I just measured right here on her bodice area. And then this was gonna be, you know, where it curves down where the arms go and the waist. So Miss Kelly asked me if I could raise this about three inches up. And so I was thinking about it and so I'm thinking that maybe two inches might be a little better. And then if she still wants me to raise it up a little more, I can do that with the next aprons. So since this is the pattern, I went ahead and just used a little marker on the end of each side, and I'm going to raise it up like this, and that's going to change my pattern just a little bit to what she wants. So I'm going to go ahead and pin that down. What I did was I just raised it. You could see I just raised it up, and then I just went ahead and ironed this. And so if this, like I said, if this is not enough for her, I can still raise it another inch. And so once she gives me the okay, then I'm just going to sew it across and so I'll have my pattern for her in my file. Before we cut out the aprons though, I think I would like to cut out the apron ties. And so I have this remnant of fabric that I used with some of the last aprons. And so I'm going to need to fold this over because this will give me two of the apron straps, the belts. 
and so that she's going to tie around her waist. Sorry if that ruler came at you. And so I want about three inches. And so Sally's on the bed there. Hey, Sally. And so I'm going to cut about three inches here. Hey, Sally, you want to say hi, YouTube? Say hi. Say hi. Okay. So Sally loves to come in the bed when I'm working. And so Jack is behind the camera. And Sally, Mommy needs to cut the fabric now. Okay. Good girl, good girl. And so anyways, we're just going to cut this like this. And so then I will have two pieces. I can always just cut uh, that seam right there, that fold. Okay, so let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to move Sally out of the way so she doesn't get hurt with my scissors. I'll be right back. So I'm going to come over here and I want to make sure it stays around three inches. And you can keep measuring across if you'd like to be sure. And a way I do it is I just come up like this, or you can keep using your ruler or your whatever you use to measure with. And so I just do that and I just keep cutting. Now I've gone ahead and cut out the whole strip. You can see how long it is, it's two yards. And I'm just going to put my scissors in here where the fold is, and I'm just going to cut straight down. Because I want two of these the exact same length and width. I have two straps here. And so I just need to press them, and so we'll do these, work on these in a little bit. And this is going to be the next strap, which I already had cut out. And so let's go ahead and cut the aprons now. I have my fabric on a flat surface. I like to work here on my bed. It works perfect for me. There's good lighting in here for me. And so, yeah, so I'm going to put the pattern that I altered, Kelly's apron pattern here, on the fold line of the fabric. So this is where I folded it in half and then I ironed it. And so yeah, so I'm just going to put it on the fold line. I'm going to allow about an inch here. And so, because since we did shorten it, she is tall and so I don't think she's going to want this super short, but if she does, then we'll just go ahead and do that next time. And then on the part on top where the bodice is, where the neck is, I'm going to also allow about an inch, I think, because when I do my seams, maybe it's about, I want to say I want to do half an inch each time. Maybe it's a little bit smaller. So half an inch to an inch, something like that. So I'm just going to allow some extra allowance. So let's go ahead and pin this down. And by the way, I got this really cute uh, pin cushion at the thrift store for something like 50 cents. And so I just wanted to show that to you. Another one of my thrift store finds. And so, you know, that's what I love about thrift stores. You never know what you're going to find. I've even found vintage patterns there that I love to collect. So I have it all pinned down to the fabric. And what I like to do, since I work on my uh, bedspread here, I like to just lift it up like that, make sure the pins are not caught on the bedspread because I've done that before. And so, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut this. Oops, I went ahead and did that, you guys. So you know what? I'm just gonna keep on cutting. Okay, I have more fabric here, and so yeah, I goofed. And so let's just go ahead and keep cutting. I think it's going to make it short for her, and so let's see what she thinks about it. I do have some more fabric, and I could always cut another one out, and so, but I think I'm just going to leave it this way. And so let's go ahead and leave the allowance up at the top, though, and so I'll do that. And so, you know what? Mistakes happen, right? When you're working on crafts or sewing. And so, what you can do also, if I wanted to, you could put a ruffle here or another piece of fabric, another coordinating color of fabric at the bottom. And so that's Sally, she's growling. <coughs> Sally, no, no, no. Okay, so I wanted to show you the allowance I left at the top. Also, I do that around the edges of the armpit. I closed the door so the dogs would be out there. Sally was barking a lot. So I'm going to let her in in just a second. So yeah, so here I'm just leaving a little bit extra allowance. I mean, you can judge that for yourself if you're making this for yourself. It's just a little bit, like I would say about a quarter inch. And I also left a seam allowance here on the side. So I went ahead and cut out the second apron, and this is what I meant to do at the bottom of the hem. So the last two things I cut out are these two pockets, rectangular pockets, and they measure 11 inches by 20 inches. And I couldn't remember the exact measurements I used last time, so we'll see if these work. The other thing I went ahead and cut out for Kelly are these scrunchies, because she loves her hair scrunchies to match her aprons. 
So I'm going to show you how I prepare the neck strap. And so I already did the, uh, the black one that I ironed for the froggy apron. And so this is the red one. And this one measures, it measures about 24 inches long. And so you may want it that long, you may want it a little shorter. And then it's about three inches wide. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just show you what I do. First thing I do is I use my spray bottle a lot to iron with. And so I'm going to fold this over just a little bit, like about a quarter inch, and press that down. And it's kind of like making your own seam binding. And then I'm going to do the same with this end right here, just about a quarter inch. I just took the dogs out on the patio and it's so nice because it's been so cold like in the morning and yesterday we had a lot of rain, which was really good. We really need the rain here in California. And so, okay, so I have those two ironed and then I'm going to do the same with this one and with this one. And so again, I'm going to use my spray bottle and I've had this iron forever, you guys, in this ironing board. And so I'm just going to do this really quickly. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the straps that go around the waist. Now, you don't have to do the straps as long as I've made them for Miss Kelly. And so she likes them long because she likes to wrap them around her waist, you know, from the wrap them to her back, then wrap them again to the front and the back. And so they're that long. And so the ones she likes, I, I do them at um, two yards, which is 72 inches, and that's really long. So you may want to only go one yard on the straps for yourself. It just depends what you want. So you can see I went ahead and ironed that flap down at the end, on both ends, and then I went ahead and did the same thing on each side. So it was like a quarter inch on each side. And so then I'm going to fold it in half. And so if you've ever seen the seam binding in the stores, this is basically it. You're basically making your own. There you go. And then I just go ahead and iron the other side. There we go. This one's a little bit more narrow than this one, as you can see. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. And so what I'm going to do when I sew these, I'm going to sew from the edge here and then all the way around. You want to make sure you catch that. You don't want to go over and all the way around the edge to this side, and then that will be done. So I'm about to start working on the waist straps, the belt, and I noticed the fraying here, and that comes from washing my fabric ahead of time, and so I'm just going to snip that off, and so you wanna make sure you do that, because you don't want to count that in when you fold it over. And so I'm just going to go along the edge and just snip that off. I have all four apron strings ready to sew. Okay, so I'm ready to start sewing one of the belts, and I'm just going to slip this right under the foot here, this little sewing foot. I forget what it's called. I think that's what it is. And anyway, so I'm going to, I guess it's like about a quarter inch, and I'm going to lock my stitch, go forward, go back, forward again, just to lock that stitch really good, because like I said, Kelly is going to be using these aprons a lot, and I want them to last. And so I'm going to pull this right over just a little bit. And then I'm just going to do a straight stitch going all the way down. I'm going to snip my threads. Always snip my threads. You can do that after also. And so yeah, so I'm just going to go all the way down, quarter inch. It doesn't have to be perfect if it puckers up a little bit, that's all right. And so like it might be a tiny bit uneven like here. And so you can either leave it like that or I like to pull it in just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna slow down here. And then right there where I think I'm just eyeballing it where it might be a quarter and it sure is. And then I'm turned it around and come around the corner and locking that stitch and lifting it up. And actually, I should have gone all the way around uh, this side, so I think I will do that also. I forgot about that. And so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the others, and I'll be right back, okay? So here I'm gonna go down this side here, lock that stitch, and just go all the way around again. And this is the top of the apron, the bib part. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this down 
and then I'm going to fold it over again and then I'm going to sew it and I'm going to do the same with the hemline so I'm going to do the first one and it's about a quarter of an inch okay, so I did the first one slipping there and I'm going to fold it over again see if you can see that and I'm going to press a second time and so that's nice and neat put that crease in there and then what I'm going to do is put it in my sewing machine and I'm going to sew straight down on this side then I'm going to flip it over and sew again on top like a top stitch on the second side and I'm going to do the same thing with the hemline and so my husband called just a little while ago from work he calls me like every day just to say hi and we just find out how each other's day is going and there we go and so I'm going to go ahead and fold it over one more time this is such cute fabric I love this fabric a lot <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and sew that up and I'll be right back now we're going to do the same thing with the sides of the apron you can see the shadows on the um, on the ironing board so you can see the time is going by quickly sun is starting to set and so I'm gonna hurry up here and try to finish this one I notice I'm running out of red thread so hopefully I'll have enough I think I can get away using a uh, white thread for the scrunchie but I'm hoping to have enough red thread for this and so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing fold it over again and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side I sewed up the sides again from the inside and also from the front so we have that top stitch and now I'm going to do the armpits and so I'm just going to spray and then I'm going to start I think I'm going to start from the top here and I'm just going to start pressing my fabric because you're going to have this curve here and so you want to just be very careful as you come around that curve also when you sew it there we go it's pressing really nicely you can see so I'm ironing again over you can see it sort of flips up here on this curve so be sure you're holding this down while you're sewing so I'm just gonna go ahead and sew a stitch again all the way around then I'm going to turn it over and do a top stitch alright so I have the entire apron sewn I went ahead and did the right here under the armpits everything is sewn all the seams and I'm happy with it and so I'm just going to go ahead and attach the apron ties now I'm going to put the the neck strap up at the top and then I'm going to attach the apron um, ties to each end of the apron and then I'm going to take the pocket and I'm going to do just like I did with everything else I'm going to put a little seam all the way around and I'm going to double stitch and then I'm going to attach it to the apron and have my husband try it on before I sew it on permanently so now I'm working on the apron with the froggies and I've already sewn it all up just like I did with the Valentine one and I'm adding the pocket so the pocket is going to depend where you want it and so this is going to be in a place where I feel that it will be a good fit for Kelly and so my husband went ahead and modeled the apron for me last night because he's the same height as Kelly about the same height so that really helps and so I have it all pinned down I'm going to sew all the way around the edge I already sewed around the edges of the pockets and I left this open you don't want to sew that down and so just pin around the perimeters of the pocket and it's a rectangle so it's pretty easy and then I'm going to once I do that twice I'm going to go through it twice then I'm going to go right down the center where I have these pins whoops that one slipped right out and I'm going to go like about an eighth of an inch over this side an eighth of an inch that side so Kelly will have two pockets and while I'm sewing I just want to recommend that maybe you put the ties on after you put your pocket on because I did catch it um, when I was sewing and I had to use my seam ripper to undo it um, with the other apron so I'm just making sure that they're completely on the side and out of my way and I want to keep my fabric flat and so okay here we go and I'm going to pull my pins out as I'm sewing so I'm going to lock that stitch oops I left my pin cushion over on the iron so that's okay hooray 
Okay, the pocket is on, you guys. I know it's a little hard to see because it's dark, but here's the back side of the fabric. And so it's really secure, the seams. I feel really confident um, with Kelly putting her cell phone in her pockets as she works. So this is day three working on the aprons. And all I had to do today actually was just iron them, press them really nice. Here is the matching scrunchie. And so I have a separate video on how to make these because this video was already going too long, you guys. So here's the pink apron, the one with the hearts and all of the doggies. It's just so adorable. I love this print and it's got the red ties. And so in the pockets, I'm going to go ahead and put this package of tissues. I got this at the Daiso Japan store. So I'm going to put that right in her pocket. I'm also going to add in her pocket this little package of erasers with the little doggy and the dog dish and the dog house. It's even got a little shoe in there for the doggies to chew on. I think she's really going to smile at that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put her matching pink scrunchie inside her pocket. So I have the aprons packaged up nice and folded inside the Ziploc bags and so just waiting for Kelly to arrive and we'll see if she likes them. Kelly, do you like your apron? I love it. it it looks so cute on you. Mm -hmm. Now you said you're going to an expo this weekend? Mm -hmm. The groom expo. The groomer expo? Mm -hmm. And so you're going to wear your apron? I am. <laughs> you get a lot of compliments on it. It is so cute. Mm -hmm. She said these are her favorite so far, right? Mm -hmm. The best one. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. Jack and Sally are running around the house because they don't want to take a bath. Sally, you got to take a bath. Gotta take a bath. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching everyone. Bye-bye.